All right, well, today we have two more special guests, Corey Wilburn, CIO at the Texas General Land Office, GLO, and Retta Mosley, CIO at the Texas Alcohol Beverage Commission, TABC. Corey, welcome back to Tech Tables. Thank you. Retta, welcome to Tech Tables. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I love this. So today's podcast is titled How to Develop and Multiply Leaders. Uh, I'm actually I'm very, very excited for this podcast because Retta used to work for Corey, uh, for those of you in the audience. And when the opportunity arose at the TABC to become the Director of Innovation and future CIO, Retta was hesitant and <laughs> ducked the opportunity. And uh, like she ducked my podcast for a while, but now she's here at the Commodore. So this worked out great uh, until Corey nudged her uh, off, off the diving board. So uh, I love that. So let's, Corey, let's start with you. Uh, did, I didn't even know, did you hire Retta? I did not, um, I, you know, but I wish I had. She, so she started at the organization in the finance department, and um, I was a lowly IT project manager at the time, okay. and we uh, were kind of paired on the same project. I actually first thought she was there to spy on me <laughs> to, uh, for the business to see how's this project really going. Uh, so we were- I was. <laughs> So we were colleagues, um, and then um, I don't know if she knows, we had a vacancy in the IT department, and I actually recommended her for that vacancy in the IT department that she was eventually selected for. So she uh, moved into IT and, and ran all of, started out running all of our budgeting and, and things like that, right? Yeah, I did um, contracts, procurement, all IT-related training, uh, budget. So what, what did you see in her? To, to want to make that? You know, um, we've always had a great working relationship. Um, Retta came in and didn't have an IT background, but was really quick to want to pick up as much as she could. She wanted to learn. She wanted to understand what was going on. And, and she represented the business, but wanted to really make sure that the, the things that we were doing were the right things for the, for the business unit that she was a part of. Um, and so she just dug in with both with both feet and, um, you know, lots of uh, late email back and forth until 1030, you know, about what about this and how's this going to work and are we sure this is going to deliver? And, and uh, she just had a great energy and, and we clicked from the start. Can I add something there? So uh, one of those late night back and forths, he sent a status report and I was like, I corrected it. Yeah. Sent it back to him and I got a phone call. He was like, <laughs> who are you and why did you correct myself? I was like, it was wrong or <laughs> it needed help, right? But we do, but. I, I need help too, don't even worry about it. I need a lot. But he, I mean, he knew that I meant it in, in all good humor, right? But that was, um, we clicked pretty fast with that. Uh, I love that, I love that. Okay, so Retta, when you were at, you were at GLO for over eight years. That's a long time. When you look back, what were two to three lessons that you would learn that you took with you to TABC? The thing that I really picked up on there, and I, I would say developed, I, I first learned it uh, growing up, my, I have very outgoing parents and very social, very involved in their community, et cetera, and, and communication was always a, a big, big deal for us. And so what I was able to hone there at the land office and, and take with me is kind of a, a three-way concept on communication, four ways really, because you have to count communicating with yourself, right? You've got to be honest with yourself. But when you communicate to people who are at a, a lower level, for lack of a better term, you always speak to them in a way that brings them up, right? And you want, because you want to bring them up to, to the vision and to the playing field where you are. When you're speaking with, in my case here, you know, peer directors, you have to make it inclusive. You want to bring them in. And then, of course, I joke, when you speak up, you do it with colors and bullet points, right? But what you really are doing is, is looking at it from their viewpoint. One of the things, last things that I did at uh, land office was uh, we did the project governance, put it into place. And when I would put together reports and get everything ready for presentation, what I would do is, uh, okay, our chief clerk, how is she going to look at this? What questions is she going to ask, right? And I would put myself in the chair going around the table. I do that same thing now, but it's to five commissioners and executive director. So those are the things that I took with me that I think have helped me succeed. Yeah, communication is, is, is a big one. So it's really great. Corey, when it comes to developing leaders like Retta, how has, how has that developed you in turn? You know, I think when I started on the journey as a leader, um, I got I got into leadership and management because I thought I had all the answers and I wanted I was a control freak and I wanted more control. I wanted to 
put my hands on it and, and drive it and, and make the decisions. But what you gradually learn over time is that um, you need help. You can't do it all by yourself. The ideas you get when you involve multiple people and perspectives are better ideas anyway. Um, and then the more you can involve others and give away some of the power and some of the decision making, the more they're invested and the more they have skin in the game. And so it just really kind of builds on itself. And, and you know, like I said, I started really just wanting to, to be the one calling the shots and, and realize once you get in there, it's, it's about the team. It's about building a cohesive vision that, that takes on multiple perspectives. Um, and it's, it's really more about giving away power to, to get your teammates vested and, and everybody going in the right direction. They'll, they'll fight those battles for you if, if you just give them the ability to do so. Yeah, no, I, I, I echo that. I love that, giving it away. I personally, um, I mean, even with, with, with the podcast, I'm trying to figure out how, uh, I think it was kind of a lesson I learned, but it's not like how I, I like, I need to find people who can help me, not how I have to go do everything. And then when you reflect on like, if you're doing too much, which right now this is a little much, but I probably could have done a better job of, of, uh, reaching out, but there's a great team that manages everything right, and and then they make you look good, like the camera guy over there, uh, doing all the great work. So it's a lot of work to make Joe look good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it took me five years to get Jamie to say yes. So <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, some serious persistence. Yeah, and I'm going to add here, he, I, I watched Corey make that transition, right, of wanting to. I, I mean, I, I, he went from, he and I were co-directors before he went up to CIO. And it, it was interesting to watch, so that's probably another lesson that I took with me, right? Because we're both type A personalities. So needless to say, we occasionally would butt heads and then go, okay, I'll do it your way this time, kind of deal, right? But it's, uh, to watch him make that transition and that transformation was, was really inspiring and, and it, was, it was cool to watch and be a part of. Okay, so let's. You said something right there. Okay. Butt heads. Yeah. Okay, it happens. Oh, right? absolutely. Happens. Yeah. 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 Anyone who's been married for more than a hot five minutes is gonna is gonna butt heads. So, how did you overcome that? Did you go to Terry Black's? How did I fed him sandwiches at lunch. Oh, okay. Okay. I did. <laughs> yeah. It was always. Um, I feel like our we always had that eighty twenty relationship, maybe ninety ten. So at eighty ninety percent cooperation. We're pulling in the same direction. Um, but enough conflict to keep it interesting and make things better. I mean, the conflict made it better. And, and when you have, I run IT, but so little of my job is about technology, right? It's really more about the people and the relationships. And you have those relationships with people where you're all working on the same thing and, and a little bit of conflict um, can bring a better idea or a better approach or a better concept. And as long as you've got that relationship underneath it, the conflict doesn't hurt. You just come right back together and you move on to the next thing and it's healthy conflict. And, and I'm going to add to that. It also, you have to have that uh, mutual respect mm -hmm. because even when I walked out of the room, you know, eat your own sandwich. I'm not, you know, <laughs> I don't, I don't care what you do, but I always knew that we both would either, I don't, either I would go back, he would go back or we would meet in the hallway. Right. Because we always thought through what each other was thinking and, and presenting in the argument. And sometimes we just agreed to disagree, right? But for the most part, it, it was, uh, you have to have that mutual respect or it just doesn't work. Great, so have the relationship, then you can make uh, those adjustments. Anything that you would do differently, Corey? If you, had, if you knew you were gonna have Retta back for another eight years, you know, um, I I would have uh, I would have given more away faster. I would have, um, you know, I, I, anything I would do differently is more about my own evolution. You, know, you look back and it's like, man, why couldn't I figure that out sooner? <laughs> um, you know, just to to go back and and be able to do all those things sooner and and have it uh, take less to get there. But no, it was a, a great relationship, and and I I know I learned as much or more from her than than she ever learned from me. Um, but I, I remember the day that she got the opportunity. You know, she got the opportunity to move to a new role at TABC, and, you know, she first comes and tells me about it, and I went home, and on the drive home, I'm thinking, how can I stop this? How can I stop her? I, you know, she's too important to the organization. How can I keep her from going? What can I give her to entice her? What can I call and threaten somebody? What, you know, what, <laughs> what can I do to make this not happen and, you know, go home and, and have a couple glasses of cab on the back porch, and by the time it's, by the time it's time to go to bed, you know, I, I had come back around to see this is a great opportunity for her. 
this is what she needs to move forward. And, and you know, I just needed that time to be able to make that turn and say, um, that's ridiculous. It's, I, I don't need to hold her back. It's my job to help her move forward. Um, and I think having that realization with somebody who was such an important part of the organization, it was a hard step for me. Um, but once I made it, I felt I, it was clear it was the right choice. I just felt better about it. It's like, no, this is the right thing to do. Um, and I, you know, I think being able to see those things sooner, having having not not be such a hard way, a, a hard time to get there. I think you would have nightmares though if he had eight more years of me. <laughs> <laughs> not, not bad. Because I'm more hard headed now than I was when I was there. Corey, l- let's finish up with multiplying leaders. So, I think Retta is a great example of of a leader that you were able to to start to multiply. She will then have folks working for her who will start to multiply. And uh, I'm just kind of curious, like, for you and your team right now, how many more leaders do you have that you're looking to pour into uh, with your time right now at GLO? Man, all of them. I mean, you know, I I think everybody on the team, you're always looking for somebody who's got those qualities and somebody who uh, is willing to invest in themselves and move up in the organization. I know um, we've got a a number of great people at the land office um, that – that I think have the opportunity to move up. Um, and investing in them is one of the most important things that I do because you know, not, not only does that help them grow within our organization and help us here, but when they go off and they become leaders at another organization, while we may have temporarily lost that skill set and that knowledge, we've gained a connection. And so now, you know, when there's a new state law that's been passed, I can reach out to Retta and find out what's happening in her organization. Um, if I'm interviewing a candidate that she knows, she can give me tips on it. And so there are things you lose when they leave the organization, but there's so much that you gain from those additional perspectives that you can kind of reach out to and, and latch on to. So I think developing those leaders, investing in them and, and helping them, you know, once you run out of opportunities to help them grow or once it's time for them to move on, helping them make that move. Um, it's, it's just it's like the whole pay it forward thing. I mean, it it's it it comes back to you in the end. That's great. And, and Retta now at TABC, who's the next Retta that, that you're looking to say? I, I actually have a couple of different people vying, uh, openly vying to have uh, the chair. And uh, I am working with both and, and making sure that they have every opportunity to learn all the aspects. Sometimes I do it, you know, because it gets up off my plate. And I'm like, you need the experience. Go ahead and do this report. Uh, a best is fine. Go into it. Um, <laughs> right, anyone who knows that one, right? So, but uh, it, it's just, it's really rewarding to, to watch their enthusiasm and their interest. And I remember when that was me, when I was wanting to learn those things, uh, whether it was in private business where I used to be or when I went into the land office, uh, the interest that they take in it and the willingness uh, they are, you know, to put in the work. Uh, you know, I set the stage and then I give them parameters. I give them the... Uh, these are the mechanics. They get tired of me going, oh, yeah, but when SAO comes calling, and they will, right, you want these things in order. But I'm telling them because I w- was on the end of an audit where we didn't do, you know, A, B, and C correctly. And so I, I try to teach them the mechanics of that and then give them lots of space. Uh, I, I call it space for success, and then you have to have grace for the failures, right? So that, that's what we're doing and trying to work through right now. That's great. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience around multiplying leaders? Kevin's Kevin's got a question. No question. Kevin looks like he wants to hire some of your people. That's what he's really. That's why you right you now. asked about who are we developing, and I, I was about to start naming people off, and I thought there's there's way too many people in this room for me to start naming names. I'll give you initials, you know. So for both of you, if you had That is really tough. Um, you know, it, any other time you would ask that question, I would answer mission related. You know, I would think about our mission and I would focus on mission. Um, but right now, I would do something workforce related. I know just retaining people and, and especially in Austin, the market's so crazy. And so I would love for salaries 
to no longer be a, a fight that I always lose. Like as part of government, I go into every battle knowing I'm going to lose that, and I would love to wipe that off the table and, and let me compete against Google and Elon and, and everybody else with mission and talking about the importance of the work we do and how it matters. I think I win nine times out of ten. And so that would today that would be my answer. So uh, you, we actually touched on it a little bit earlier. We have a enforcement, half of our culture is enforcement, and we have auditors and licensed folks, right? And everything's been very siloed. And if I could figure out a way to, and, and COVID helped, right? I mean, the, all of a sudden people needed the technology and they were willing to pick those things up. But if I could find a way to knock down those walls, and I have a boss who is very good at doing that, right? But it's 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 very time uh, sensitive, or not time sensitive, but time consuming. Pardon me. But I, I would love to be able to open that because I like uh, what Rick said earlier about you shouldn't have to think about the technology, right? It should it should be an after, it shouldn't even be an afterthought. So if I could open up that culture and and move into that space a little bit more. IT or not, that's that's where I think we make our wins is because then everybody's on the same page. Yeah, Summer. What are the some of the key characteristics you look for when, when you're picking out the leader, right? You go into okay. a room and what makes you say that person's worth the night? So I actually had an opportunity when I first went to TABC. I, I was watching a lady who had just come over from the licensing division as a project manager, she went and got her PMP, and then, you know, and it took a couple of conversations, and I was like, because we knew we were getting ready to be, do a l large transformation initiative, the agency hadn't done anything, I think, since 1935, when they were formed, uh, I think it might have been the early 2000s, um, but she, she was bright, she studied, you know, her surroundings, she studied her audience, and uh, you only had to explain something to her once. She only made mistakes once, right? But she was very self-educating um, and, and self-reliant, and uh, she could talk and collaborate with people in a way that I didn't really care what her technical skills were as far as project management. I cared that she brought that into a room and made it all inclusive, what I was saying, right? She can bring those divisions together. I, I can teach you, you know, the how to move the widgets around, right? But I can't teach you necessarily those qualities. And so that's what I look for. And she's my shining example of that. I, I think that's a great answer. I, and I would say something. So I would say soft skills and, and you know, EQ uh, more than anything else. I think if you can find those, uh, then you can you can probably train them on most of the most of the other responsibilities. But great question. that one first I'll go second I you know um, I, I would say it was all good from the perspective of I, I knew I had good people working for me but going through the pandemic now I know I had great people working for me um, you know we just came together I, I we love we're so good at a crisis I mean when there's when there's a problem we love to solve it we love to fight the fires and so um, I, someone else said earlier talked about how the pandemic really helped us uh, eliminate a lot of the fear. You could just move forward on projects all of a sudden that used to take lots and lots of time and, and communication and change management, whereas we could just really let it rip and, and, and put some things in place to help business. And my staff was invigorated by that. And so we had people just falling all over themselves to, to get things out the door as quickly as possible. And, and so it was a huge, a huge positive, and I felt even better about my team afterwards than, than I did before, and, and I wouldn't have even thought that was possible. So. I, probably a very similar experience. We were already about 75% mobile, which helped us. Uh, we were able to go fully mobile in about three weeks. So that part of it, uh, you know, was a no-brainer for us. The I, I, I actually had to go back to a lot of my people. They weren't on the road anymore, right? Two hours, you know, an hour each way plus. And I actually had to go back to them. It's like, you need to cut back your hours, right? Because they were sitting down earlier and they were staying there longer but the level of dedication that they brought to the table was it, it was 
it was very overwhelming and it was uh, very satisfying, you know, and it, 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 my job as a leader became much easier because they were very self-motivated. I think part of it might have been, I, you know, I don't want to lose my job. I want to be visible. I want to, you know, make sure that they know I'm pulling my weight. But at the same time, I think that's just how dedicated they were to their jobs. And, and you know, that's, I think that's a great thing about, about public service. Um, it's amazing how many people are motivated by making a difference. And, and when they know their work matters, you don't have to ask people to do more. Most people are just willing to step up on their own and do more. And so I think that's why that's such a big part of all, our culture is reinforcing how much the work we do matters, how much it impacts people's lives. Um, I, I think it makes the job more fulfilling, and it seems to make people buy in a lot more. So That's great. Any other questions? I have another comment for Mandy. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So you didn't ask the question this broadly, but I'm going to give you, if I had my druthers, and I know it's not a magic wand you carry around, but I want to just address it. If I could work in this type of job and not have to have a magic you know, ball five years out to ask for funding that's going to be short the next year, right? And I, I don't say that to you as, as in your position on that, right? It's a battle we all fight. And so I, I think if we can ever make that turn and, and find a different way to, to approach IT, I, I think it would make uh, such a huge difference, especially for, I mean, he talks about salary woes, and I'm like, blah, blah, right? Because, you know, try being a GR agency, right? Because it's just, it's totally different. So if you can, if we can ever find a way to do that, that would be, I think the state would benefit in a huge way. But that's the other side of my, my answer for you. I'm looking forward to uh, the next podcast with Kevin and Mandy because when we get to the Q&A session, I think Retta over here has, has got her eyes on Mandy. <laughs> yeah, Retta, you sit right there. Awesome. Uh, any other final questions? We're good. Awesome. Well, Corey, Retta, thank you for coming on Tech Tables. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you appreciate it.